For more on this, let's talk to Dr. Cathy Kamkar. She is a clinical psychologist in Toronto. So, Dr. Kamkar, I appreciate your time this evening. I want to start with what you make of today's announcement. It is heartwarming. It is exciting. Uh, when we're talking about mental health, mental health is health. So whether we're talking about our physical health or our mental health, there is always this holistic approach to uh, to care, the system approach, uh, mind-body connection. We always want to to appro appreciate. And when we think of the framework related to mental health, we are talking about promotion, prevention, early intervention, treatment, and of course, maintenance as our recovery and the sooner we start the more proactive we are all right so you think this does go far enough to address the concerns about mental health in our youth because you seem happy about the program what i want to ask you next is that you mentioned the starting point now this curriculum will start with grade seven and eight students and then revisit in grade 10 what do you think of that part of the plan by the age of 40, one in two individuals will have or have had an experience with mental illness. 70% of mental health concerns do onset in childhood and adolescence. So the earlier we are able to start, um, we're talking about just skills to better manage our anxiety, to stress, recognizing their emotions, being able to regulate and uh, control their emotions. We know for example, example, emotional intelligence are so important um, to our health, to our quality of life, and also they make us also better adults. So just as we see children learning how to read, how to write, mm -hmm. um, how to do math, learning now about even finances, learning how to navigate better their health and their mental health, can um, then it also helps to reduce the stigma, to focus on our early intervention, and just simply normalize the talk around mental health. I think that's a big part of it, especially when you're trying to remove that stigma, normalizing the talk. So, you know, what is the overall state of mental health for our, our young people? You work in this field, especially after COVID. Well, we have have seen overall um, the concerns around the mental health needs have been on the rise. Uh, we have certainly seen throughout COVID how um, telemedicine, so video uh, therapy, everything has exponentialed, which has been proactive and positive because uh, less a concern about commute or travel, okay. uh, the cost related to commute. And so, of course, there are always the gaps that we need to fill in terms of access to care, building access to care, reducing stigma. So these are all proactive approach to our care when we hear our youth now having uh, mental health as part of their curriculum. Yeah, it's important, I, I think, for literacy around this. You know, the MPP who brought the bill forward lost her son to suicide. And she said, you know, he went on a university tour, attended a dance, school dance shortly before, adding, you know, anyone seeing him would have observed a normal, healthy teenager. But we know now that wasn't the case. So what are the warning signs parents and teachers should be looking out for here, you think? Some of the key warning signs, it's, it's again, very much this mind-body connection we want to appreciate. And for everyone, it can also be very different. But certainly, if we are able to notice any significant behavioral changes, uh, maybe tendency to self-isolate, being withdrawn, uh, does not want to socialize, um, they do not want to go to school anymore, they do not want to participate in any other extracurricular activities. So any of those drastic changes in their behaviors, including, let's say, as well, any changes, it could be in the mood, low mood, feeling more anxious, uh, wanting to avoid any social gatherings, changing concentration, their appetite. So any of those, including sometimes it could be, again, bad dreams or mm -hmm. suicidal ideation, we really want to keep those uh, in mind. The importance is for everyone to know not to suffer in silence and to normalize the conversation. We have seen here how in terms of the more we are able to talk about it, so I think this is the most important part, is to have those converse conversations as early as possible because the more we are able to normalize a conversation, stigma goes down. Public stigma, self-stigma, personal stigma, workplace stigma, they all go down. And it helps to reduce negative attitudes yes. towards mental health conditions. It yes. helps to build positive, supportive behaviors um, towards anyone struggling with any mental health. And of course, building awareness. 
so important to build awareness and remove that stigma so people feel more comfortable comfortable talking about this as we have been tonight. Dr. Kathy Kamkar is a clinical psychologist. She's based in Toronto, and we appreciate you sharing your expertise with us tonight, Dr. Kamkar. Thank you. Thank you for all you do.